Welcome back to Plague of Shadows. Last time we hung out in the village slash potionatorium as well as getting to grips with Plague Knight himself. And now we're heading to King Knight's stage. Of course, going to the left first is always the thing you should do in King Knight's stage because, well, the game designers are just kind of douchey like that. And the layout is changed a bit, as you might have seen just there. There wasn't a platform. You needed to bomb burst across in order to actually get to this area. And there's some sparkling water there within a fish. Kind of like with Shovel Knight. You just throw down the bait bomb into a pile of sparkling stuff and you're able to get a fish or various other things. And now I've equipped the float burst. It's pretty self-explanatory rather than just jumping and making some big distance, you float through the air. It's pretty useful, again, kind of casual, and you might think that you can't do multiple bomb bursts in the air with it, because when you're floating you can't charge up your bombs. However, you actually can. A special thing about the float burst is that if you press down while using it, you'll actually cancel out of it and instead go into like a regular falling state. So what I like to do is Jump, burst, press down, shoot a bomb, then hold the button, jump again, and then burst again to get a second float burst. It's a bit more complicated than regular bursting. Something to get used to, but uh, I have, and after you do get used to it, it's pretty easy. And as you can see here, I'm getting a ton of health because of these extra health tonics. You find them more often than not in the water, actually. There's not going to be a lot of fish to find, in my opinion, or at least as I recall it. And back on the subject of magic, the way Plague Knight's magic works, of course, is that it's a rechargeable meter, rather than being a uh, number with Shovel Knight. So uh, when you use certain powers, that meter will go down a bit. And I'm getting hit here to show off that Plague Knight is actually taller than Shovel Knight. Back in the original campaign, you can actually duck under those things, those fireballs, but uh, with Plague Knight, you can't. He's also a bit smaller than his uh, normal sprite, like the one where you fought him as a boss, but uh, not by much. Back on the magic again. Um, each set of magic takes away a certain amount of your bar, like the bait bombs here take away essentially one section and as you increase the bar it'll be able to last longer well not really last longer but uh you'll be able to shoot it off more before you go into a recharge state when you are in a recharge state from using too much bomb stuff then well i say bomb stuff arcanas then you can't use any you're stuck with just irregular bombs can't use any Arcanas, and you have to wait for it to recharge. The sucky thing about upgrading your magic is that the amount of time you have to recharge gets longer with the longer your bar is. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. You get to use more at once, but you also have to wait longer if you ever do uh, lose out, like if you ever overuse your magic. I don't find myself doing so very often though, in fact the bombs, the regular bombs are probably going to be the way to go in this campaign, so uh, not really that big of a deal, the whole recharging arcana thing, but it's there if you need to know about it. And we have another kind of special chest over here, similar to the one where we got those extra health tonics, well not really extra, there were five in total and we could carry five, so uh, yeah, but similar to the one where we got the health tonics, instead it has a relic inside, the Flare Wand. We can't use this relic. It's only for Shovel Knight, so uh, we'll have to deal with it a bit later. Also, um, there's certain sections of level that are unique to Plague Knight. So, for example, when we went up that ladder, it wasn't there in Shovel Knight's campaign, but it is here. So, specific to Plague Knight. Only Plague Knight can get up there, because only he can jump that high. And also, you know, there was a Cypher Coin kind of leading you to it. 
so whenever you see cypher coins, try to look around where they are, especially if there's just one kind of hanging out, or maybe in a wall or something like that. That usually leads to an extra section that's Plague Knight specific. Something that I didn't talk about during Shovel Knight's campaign that I was planning on talking about here because we're going through a lot of the same level was the character bios. Kind of like with the Mega Man games, the various knights also have character bios showing their likes and dislikes and a brief summary about them. I'll get into that in a bit because there is something special here. With Plague Knight you can fit into this wall and head into the same place where we found Chester as Shovel Knight. And we're going to be doing that because Chester doesn't really take money in this campaign. Rather, he'll trade you a relic for an arcana, and if you have that relic, it's completely for free. Well, not really for free, but uh, it costs no money, just, you know, just a relic. It's assumed that after trading with Plague Knight here, he will eventually sell the, um, the relic to Shovel Knight. But the first relic that we get is probably the one that I'm going to be using the most, the Big Boom. It's essentially a giant bomb. You throw it, it bounces off walls for a little bit, but once it does hit something, it has a huge cross hitbox that can take down a lot of enemies very quickly. If the enemy gets hit by like the bomb itself, then they're probably going to be taking two hits of damage. The thing is, it's pretty inconsistent, so uh, sometimes they might take two hits, sometimes they might take one. Really it's probably um, how close the enemy is to the center of the bomb that determines how much damage they take from it. It's so, like if they're at the center they get hit by the casing of the bomb as well as the explosion, but if they're far away from it they just get hit by the explosion. Something like that. Anyway, back to the bio of King Knight. Uh, king Knight isn't a king, he is a king-themed knight, but that does not stop him from making decrees. As the Lord Defender of Pridemore Keep, he commands a formidable army of minions. Experienced with repelling invaders who dare try topple his malevolent monarchy, King Knight is a master of single combat, and because he's dressed to the nines at almost all times, he's always ready for a brutal coronation. Pros? Commanding presence, charismatic, Snappy Dresser. Cons, not actually a king. So there's going to be some of those for every knight that we encounter. But considering that the knight stages are a lot longer as Plague Knight due to those specific Plague Knight sections near the Cypher Coins, we're probably only going to, we're probably only going to be hearing one per video. Something very minor that I didn't talk about because I was talking about the bio was that if you were to, say, start hitting a checkpoint, and then after you've hit it a bunch, you, um... You go to a different screen, and then return to the screen where the checkpoint was, the checkpoint will be back at full health, I guess you could call it. So, uh, no... Accidental destroying of checkpoints, I guess. It does take four hits with the, uh, bombs to do so anyway. Another thing about Arcanas is that if you have a Charge Burst ready and you use an Arcana, it'll cancel out your Charge Burst. Like as you see right here, I'm holding down the button to charge, but I let loose a big bomb, well big boom rather, and it makes me lose the charge. Kind of lame, you can't like chain a bomb burst with a big boom, and also if you have the float burst, you'll stop your floating stuff if you use an Arcana. So, be wary of that. If you're using a regular burst, it probably won't be that detrimental, but because I'm all casual and stuff and I don't want to die, because if I did, I would both lose money and lose a lot of progress, using a float burst is not necessary, but uh, it makes things a lot easier. Again, you can just get by with the basic burst, and it's also easier to um, do multiple bomb bursts in the air with the basic burst. There was a uh, 
well, there are a bunch of minions in the Potionatorium, and they give you little hints. That's actually where I learned that you can bomb burst multiple times in midair. I just thought, well, I did it once. I can't do it anymore. You're limited to, like, one aerial extra maneuver. Like, you can only do one double jump, so it makes sense that you'd only be able to do one bomb burst. Not the case. You can perform multiple in midair, and one of the minions told me about it. You can talk to the minions rather than blowing them up, but, uh, I'm playing as a villain. I don't want to talk to my minions, I want to explode them. And they come back later, so there's no repercussions. I guess the hood just makes them invincible to their own explosions, or something like that. Well, that's actually not true because of something that'll be happening later. There are 30 Saffer, Saffer, Cypher coins in this level. And usually, it's pretty easy to keep count of them. Like, for example, if I had gone straight from the first level into this one, I would have been like, okay, once I'm at 60, that's it, I'm good on Cypher coins. But since I went to the village and gathered all these Cypher coins in the Potionatorium, it's actually like 64 that I have to keep count of. So, uh, just remember that with the extra Cypher coins comes a bit more, I guess, memorization of your numbers. You can also just, um, go to, like, the menu, the item menu, and check how many Cypher coins you've gotten. So, that's pretty neat. And once you get to 10, uh, health, upgrades, you can't use another potion, so uh, any extra potions that you find will just have to sit there, lie in wait. Well, there is a specific case where you can use another potion. If you take damage and you still have the max health, then you can scarf down a potion just to regain one dot of health, as I said before. Kinda useful. It's really the only reason Using more than six potions is useful for a run like I'm doing where I don't die. That is something I neglected to mention. Uh, if you do die, bleh, if you do die, you'll lose out on all your extra health. So since I have six extra green dots added, I'm gonna have to use up six more potions in order to get myself back up to full health if I were to die. But of course I'm not going to die. So, I'm perfectly fine. When I first played the game, that led to a lot of restarting the levels because I didn't feel like wasting a lot of my potions. I forgot the name there. And, you know, there's only five, and my max normal health is four, so if I were to use some potions, I wouldn't even be at max health. Of course, we have king knight to fight. As I said, not really a king. And Plague Knight likes to have a bit more fun with his banter when talking with these knights. By which I mean make a lot of fun of them. He berates them. He'll laugh at a lot of things that they're saying. Kinda cool. Again, playing as a villain is very neat. I like it more than playing as the hero a lot of the time. And that's the end of King Knight, because it doesn't have many aerial maneuvers, it's very easy to uh, float above him with the burst and just rain down projectiles. Also, the big bomb can take away a good chunk of his health, so that's pretty useful. As you saw, once we defeated him, we got a special orb kind of thing. This special orb kind of thing is used in the Potionatorium. It's called an Essence. And essences are held by a bunch of knights, and also, like, how should I put this? They're kind of keys to, uh, getting whatever, I was gonna call him Potion Knight. Plague Knight is trying to get in this game, his ultimate goal. You can see in the background that stuff is kind of going on, purifying the essence, I guess, so that they can hold it. The other option when talking to Mona is research, and if you have a bunch of cypher coins, then you can perform said research. Essentially what it does is give you more options in the shop, so extra bursts if you want, 
extra casings, powders, fuses. I will be showing off what some of these do. I think I'll buy one right now and actually, excuse me, show off how different it is. Hopefully. Come on, don't make a liar out of me. No, I didn't do it. Oh well. I could explain it right now. Casings change how your bomb is thrown. For example, the lob casing makes it so that you throw the bomb up in an arc, kind of like with the big boom or the anchor in Shovel Knight's campaign. Um, the powder changes what type of explosion it causes. So, for example, um, the cascade powder that I was eyeing makes it so that rather than just three small explosions, the explosions get larger with every bomb you throw at it. And then the last thing is the fuse and that changes how long it takes for the bomb to actually explode. So like a short fuse makes it so that bombs explode pretty quick after throwing them. A long fuse makes it so that they explode a long time after throwing them. Pretty self-explanatory. You can't change your bomb types on the fly. You have to go into the menu in order to do that. The only thing you can change on the fly is your arcanas. But because you are able to change your bombs on the fly, you can have a ton of different like setups with Plague Knight. And that leads to a lot of different ways of playing, which is very neat. As opposed to Shovel Knight, where you have the arcana, the armors, and the upgrades which all stack, so... It's, it's more limiting as Shovel Knight. As Plague Knight, you have all this extra stuff you can play with, which is very neat. Although, usually when I'm going through the game, I actually stick with the bounce casing, I think it's called. That's the one that I'm using right now. The black powder and the normal fuse. That's essentially the normal set that you start out with. The only thing I really change is the burst that you use because you can obviously get multiple bursts as I've shown. And right now we have one of those extra treasure sections. This one being based off of the bait bomb. You need to actually beat King Knight in order to get to this section but you get the bait bomb as soon as um well, as soon as you have enough money to buy it at the Potionatorium. Also, I maxed out my magic already. Uh, I have as big as the bar as it's going to go. Well, it's kind of a weird way of phrasing it, but the bar is as big as it's going to get, is what I'm trying to say. So, uh, no more increases, but also we have as much power as possible. We can send off four bait bombs without, well, until... We have to recharge, so that's pretty cool. Another, th uh, bleh, another thing about the power meter is that it'll change color depending on its status. So at green, it means you can use your arcana without fear of uh, going into the sort of overloaded mode where you can't use anything and the meter has to recharge, like forcefully recharge and you can't use anything during it um and when it's orange it means that the next time you use an arcana that it's going to go into the overload version whoops i kind of bumped something right there they have some pretty clever ways of using the bait bomb here like using it near or on platforms so that it kind of shakes at the edge of the platform before it falls off and you can get the bait bomb pretty far with that. The bait bombs are timed though, eventually they will explode on their own, so be careful of that. Make sure that when you use the bait bomb it's uh, it's with precision. Like right here, this is a pretty precise throw to make. You actually need to jump in order to make it as well, you can't do it from a standstill. And once we get the bomb over there, we need to constantly jump to make sure that the skull doesn't take us with it. It's probably smarter to do this after, um, what's his face, Spectre Knight's stage, the Lich Yard, because there's some mechanics that are on the Lich Yard, that are in the Lich Yard rather, that are used in the stage, like the, uh, the skull that weighs down platforms, or, well that's actually pretty much it, the skull and the platforms themselves, really. 
Another thing about the bait bombs is that they go through shields. Same with the big boom, as I recall, also goes through shields. And those knights there, we're not going to be seeing them again for probably a really long time because they're in one of the later sets of the Order of No Quarter stage. Kind of odd that they put them there, but I guess it's to show that you can attack enemies from below you with the bait bombs. Kind of like with the anchor, well not the anchor, the um, the fishing rod, how it could attack enemies below you. But the fishing rod, I don't think could break through blocks. Maybe it could. I never used it for that. Whatever. We're done with this stage, or mini stage kind of thing. In those use your items to get through kinds of stages, there are only 20 cypher coins. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. There's not 30 like in regular ones. And as you continue to use cypher coins with Mona, the cost of research goes up. So at first it was 40, now it's 60. And now I'm actually going to buy some extra bombs now that I've pretty much, well not extra bombs, but extra components to bombs. Now that I've gotten a full magic meter, that's pretty much what most of my money was going into at first. Now I get to show off the component powder as three separate bombs at max, just like with the black powder. And if all three collide, then they'll perform this big explosion kind of thing, kind of like a big boom. And as you see with the standard fuse, the bombs go a bit farther, but with the quick fuse, they stay a bit closer to me. Not very great with the black bomb. I guess with the component powder, it would be pretty good because that means you can get off the larger third tier attack after using it. I should, I guess, get into music. Um, at least the music sheets in Plague Knight's campaign, but I'll be doing that a bit later. In fact, I'll do it next time when we head to the Lich Yard, the Lair of Spectre Knight.